Hello, welcome to this Act Together workshop called Painting Pebbles Together. My name is Gemma, I'm on the Act Together team and I really wanted to share this with you because I love doing arts and crafts in my spare time. My background is in teaching and I think that it's a really nice way for adults and children to spend time together. Whether that's that they're working on the same piece of art or it might just be that they're doing separate pieces but enjoying the shared experience of being around each other. So what we're going to do is have a go at painting pebbles and I'm going to talk you through the different steps. Feel free to pause this video at any point so that you can do those steps in order. So the first thing really is to collect some pebbles that you're going to paint. And this is a really nice opportunity for you to go out as a family, as an intergenerational group and have a walk and just enjoy noticing the things around you. When you're looking for pebbles, you can make a little bit of an adventure out of it, asking the people in your group, you know, who can find the biggest or can anyone find a flat one? Have some really interesting discussions about what pebbles you might try and look out for, what, which ones you enjoy the shape of, or you might even notice certain pebbles have a shape that would be really good for a particular type of painting. So maybe one that's got a crack in it that you think, wow, I can turn that into a shark mouth or a really nice flat one that will let you put a picture on it. So enjoy going out together and having these discussions and just see if it makes your walk feel any different when you're going out together. Good places to look um, can be an area of discussion as well. So maybe as a group, where shall we go? Do we think we'll find pebbles at the park along the side of a, a footpath? So plan where you're going to go together and just enjoy having those conversations. When you've brought back your pebbles, the next thing to do is to wash them. So obviously they've been on the ground. We want to make sure that we're clean and safe. So again, you can do this separately or perhaps an adult will want to do this job. Put your pebbles in the sink and put some water in the bottom so that you've got something to scrub them with. You'll need a brush with bristles like this one to help lift all the dirt off and I would put a little bit of washing up liquid on the brush to scrub them with. Pick up each pebble or rock in turn and just see if you can scrub the dirt off. Make sure to do both sides and then your paint will stick even better. When you've scrubbed them all Take the water out, Oops, try not to lose any down the plug hole and give them all a little rinse to get the bubbles off and leave them to dry out fully before you do any painting. Try leaving them in a sunny area to dry out or if you've got some kitchen roll or an old towel you might want to pat them dry so that you can use them a bit quicker. While your pebbles are drying, you could use the time to do some planning, maybe sketch out some pictures of what you're going to put on the pebbles. And as I said before, you might want to even look at what shape they are, because the shape might help you come up with some ideas. Things you could think about are putting writing on them, painting a picture, maybe even a symbol or some sort of emoji smiley face. You might just want to have coloured pebbles with no picture on them, but just make them bright so that when you put them back out into nature, they really stand out. Talk together as a group and notice, are there any differences in ideas between the adults and children in the group? And how can you work together? So it might be that somebody's really good at painting a particular shape or image. And so you can help each other with your designs. So I've got lots of these little round pebbles here and I was actually thinking rather than painting any patterns on them that what I'll do is I'll paint them all different colours and when I put them out in the environment I'll arrange them into a rainbow shape. So I'll kind of have them like that and make a rainbow caterpillar kind of thing. I quite like this one because it, it made me think of the shape of a fox's head. 
and I was thinking I can kind of decorate it. I'll need to leave some room to put the ears on and have to get some colours. Well, then maybe it looks more like a cat now. Cat might work as well. But I thought that would work as a little face shape. This one here is really flat, so I could do some sort of landscape on it. I'd have room to kind of paint the background. So maybe paint... Ooh, I might do some sea with a little island and then draw a little tree in black on the top. So enjoy talking about these ideas together because you might bounce ideas off of each other. Um, this one... I actually quite like the shape of this one. I thought it looked a little bit like a house or maybe even a clock tower that I could kind of put some doors on it like that and have a little building. So I'd only paint the front of that one, whereas for these pebbles, for the rainbow, I'd paint them all the way around. So plan out how you're going to paint them. Um, for some of them, you might just make it up as you go along. And you can also think about where you're placing them. So if you know you've got a school nearby, or if you know you have um, you know, an old people's home, what might they enjoy? So I, I do have a school nearby, so I might go for some kind of emoji symbols, might kind of paint little faces on them. Just something simple to make people smile. So, Enjoy planning out because that will help you then work out what colours you need, maybe change some of the materials. You could think about doing symbols. Um, on one of them actually, I've got quite a lot of room. I thought it might be nice to write a joke on one side, um, but people have to turn it over for the answer. So for some of these big flat rocks, that could work. And you can also just put a word on them. So this one, again, nice and flat. I think I might just colour that all in and use some nice writing um, to maybe write the word love. But I'll write it in a fancy font. So use some paper to sketch out what it is you're wanting to do and talk to each other about these ideas and how you're going to work it out. So next I'm going to show you some paintings that I'm doing on my pebbles. I'm going to use acrylic paint. Now that paint dries with a bit of a waterproof or plasticky finish and that's really helpful for if they're going outside. You might not have that kind of paint if you have poster paint or watercolour paint. It will dry on the pebble but it will wash off in the rain um, which does mean that the paint will run into the environment so try not to put it in places where there are lots of animals. If you don't have paints, you might like to put chalk on your pebbles. Again, that will wash off in the rain. You could even try wrapping tin foil around them or tying ribbons around them instead of painting patterns just to make them stand out and just to make them interesting when you put them outside later. So have a think about what materials you have near you that you can use to decorate your pebbles with. As I said, I'm going to show you some painting techniques next. Think about setting up the area that you're working in. So I've put some paper down where I'm going to be painting and I've also put paper under the rocks so that they don't scratch the table. You might want to use a tablecloth. I've got a tray at the end for the rocks to sit on when they're dry. And then I've got all my materials ready to hand. You'll need some paint brushes. I've got a couple of different types here. so. Think about how many people are painting, because you'll want brushes to use each. These ones are slightly thicker, so that's good for doing backgrounds. Whereas these ones have thin bristles at the top, and that's good for doing any details on the surface. I've got some water to clean my brush, a palette to put my paint in. If you don't have a palette, you can just use a dish. This kind of paint isn't too runny, so it will sit in splodges on there quite nicely. A little bit of kitchen roll or to wash um, when you've washed your brush just to dry it so you don't make the paint too runny. 
and then whatever colours you're wanting to use. So I've grabbed all the rainbow colours because they're probably the most useful and black and white as well to go with it. It sometimes comes in these plastic tubes but you can also get it, acrylic paint in these metal tubes as well. So grab all your things together but then I'm going to clear them out of the way so I've got room to paint. Before you start putting your paint out you might also want to make sure you've got some sort of apron because sometimes it can spray on the way out just to show you that the paint comes out quite thick and you don't need a lot of it usually remember you can always put more in if you need it but it's hard to get it back in the tube once you've squirted it out it's best to start with any plain backgrounds and that way you give them plenty of time to dry So this is quite an easy thing for the youngsters to do is to just pick the block colour and you'll want to make sure to brush it into the gaps, especially where you've got pebbles that are different textures. Think about whether you're going to paint both sides or just one side. If you are painting both you might like to let one side dry and then turn it over. Or, if you don't mind getting a bit messy, pick it up, paint both sides and just put it on your surface to dry. If it's very wet, it might stick to the surface, so if you're putting it on paper to dry, it might get the paper stuck to it. It's better to try and do all of one colour at once and then you don't have to wash your brush as often. When you are washing your brush, try to go around the sides of the cup rather than too much along the bottom. Kind of push it against the edges, pull it against the side to get the water off, and then just gently rub it against your kitchen roll to get the thick of it off. Doesn't matter if there's a little bit left, because these are thick colours, when you pick up the new colour it won't make much difference. You might get quite messy when you're picking them up, so make sure to wash your hands before, say, picking up a different colour, otherwise you'll get transfer. For some of your pebbles, you might not want to use block colour. You might instead want to do some blending. So I'm going to mix some colours here to make a sky. And again, you probably won't need too much to get that effect. Remember, these are quite thick paints, so you won't need to add water when you're doing this. So for this one, I'm going to go for quite a, a cloudy sky, because I think it will be oops, a light sky. It'll look good for mountains. And you can see where I've not fully mixed the colours, I'm getting some, some texture in. I don't need to go all the way down to the bottom because the bottom's where my forest will be. And think about whether you want to paint around the sides as well, so that it's painted from different angles. I'm not gonna do the back of this one though. But I'm actually gonna go for a bit of a, a sunset. And so what I'm gonna do, sunset in the water, so, is I'm gonna take my yellow and just brush it up quite a bit of the way. I'm leaving a gap at the bottom for the water and then I don't need to wash my brush for this one. I'm going to grab a little bit of orange and I'm going to start at the top with the orange and just slowly bring it down and as you bring it down it will mix with the yellow to get that gradient. So it changes from one to the other and Adults and children can both try this one because it's just slow. You can do it slowly or quickly, You can, but it's just brushing lines together to get that blend and it looks really effective. So enjoy playing around with that. I'm going to do another blended background on this one where I've got some pink paint on my brush to start with. And then later on I'm going to put some red at the top. So you can kind of start with your light colour, take it up most of the way, 
blending's quite hard to do going around the side of the pebble. So this is good for ones where you're just doing the top surface. Okay, and then I'm going to grab a little bit of my red. You don't need very much for the dark colours. Start on the top, and I've still got the pink on the brush, and I'm just going to drag it downwards and let it blend in. Oh, actually, I'm going to go at the bottom as well. I'm going to do it both sides so that it gets light in the middle. And I think I'm going to put a word on this one. So I want the middle to be nice and light so that you can see the word clearly. Again, this is a really, really easy technique. As long as you keep going in straight lines, the paint does most of the work for you. And it's up to you. You can add a little bit more if you want it even darker. But if you are going to add more, always start at the very edge and then just slowly work your way in. So once you have all your backgrounds on, give it all plenty of time to dry before you do the foreground. Once it's all dry, the next job is to look for anything that still needs more background on it. So for example, these ones are still missing the landscape at the bottom, so they're the next ones that we need to paint to give them plenty of time to dry. So I'm going to use green for this one to give myself a kind of forest floor. So these foregrounds should still be really easy for adults or children to do because you're just putting block colours on. And it might be that you save the details for somebody with a bit more of a steady hand. For this one, I'm going for a, a, a desert island at sunset. So I'm going to do it as a silhouette and have black. Actually, I might make it curvy. So it looks like part of the island. And actually what I'm going to do now is swap for a thinner brush to put on the palm tree. So you may remember, it's not quite the same as the design, but it's similar. So this bit takes a little bit more care. But because it's quite a simple design, it should be okay for all ages. And you'll find that silhouettes are quite effective and easy to do. You can't go too far wrong. There we go. Might put some coconuts in there as well. So that one just needs to dry and then it's finished. For this one, I think because of the rocky top, I'm going to go for some mountains. So I've got myself a grey colour. I've not mixed the paint that well and that means that the paint will kind of have different textures as I go. You can see it's a bit lighter there. Mountains normally on the top because they're higher ground they get a bit of snow so you might want to put, put some lighter colours at the top there. And blend it in on the way down. There we go. So these two are probably finished. I might put some details in the sky. This one still needs to dry and then I can put some sort of maybe trees, bushes, something in the foreground. Anything else that you know needs time to dry should go on first. So for instance here I'm going to need to put the white of my clock face and make sure that dries before I put the numbers on the clock. So I'm using a thin brush there. I've just painted straight on it, but you might want to have somebody sketch out with a pencil what it is you're going to paint to help get it more accurate. This one I'm going to try and go for an emoji face. So I'm going to put the yellow on top and that'll need time to dry before we put the face on. Ooh, now this paint is a little bit see-through. So... I might need to come back and put another layer on it later, actually. Oops, wobbled there. If you do find that it goes wonky because of the shape of the pebble, you might want to just try and even out the other side to line it up. 
Remember to come back to the sketches that you did earlier to help you. With this one, I was going for kind of a, an unusual frog. So I'm just going to put the details in for his eyes. Ooh, got a crevice in the pebble there, it's a little bit hard to paint. There we go, there's his eyes. Let's give him a silly mouth as well. Make it wobbly. So this one, because it's nice and playful, I think I'll put down by the school. There we go. So I used the computer to find a slightly better sketch of a fox, because I knew that mine looked a bit more like a weird cat. It's usually best to start with the light colours first, then you put the darker ones over the top. not left much room for his ears there. That can be an ear. And the other one's kind of <laughs> off screen shall we say. I'm going to put the doors on my church. For some of your designs you might want to try using a pencil to mark out where you're going to paint. It doesn't come very strong which can be good because then it means it's not too noticeable um, you know it's not going to come through the paint but it might make it hard to follow especially for for younger ones there we go your designs don't have to be complicated to be effective and eye-catching I'm going to add some details to these ones now so for this one I'm just going to put the sticks, sorry, the uh, trunks of some trees in and then I'll add the leaves later when they're dry. So again, this one's nice and straightforward. Should be quite easy for, for the younger ones to do. I think this one's pretty much done, but what I am going to do just to bring it to life a little bit, again, using that really thin brush, is just put a couple of little birds in the sky. Yeah, just to bring that, I'm going to do stars first. So always start at the back and work forwards. So I'm going to dip my really thin brush in a little bit of white. And so this is almost like a little fantasy at night time. I might put a little moon in there as well actually. And then a little bit like this one, I'm going to go for some trees in the foreground. So this can be a little bit like a forest. And because I'm doing, I'm going to do this one all in black. So I'm going to put the branches on first and then just pull the brush side to side. Almost like a triangle shape to make those trees. And just do it really roughly and that way you get some gaps where the light's still coming through. I'm doing another one here at the side. And actually, I'm just going to put a bit of black at the bottom and paint the paint the ground on. There we go. For the trees on this one, the main part is brown, but I'm going to do the leaves in a different colour. So there's the green, and you slightly cover it up, but you can still see it through a little bit. And you can put different shades of green, get them to be different heights. And that way you've got a nice little forest. And again, you don't have to worry about being too careful with trees. Because they're not, you know, they're not neat and uniform. So this should be fine for any age to do that one. It's not too detailed. Yeah, you've got a little woodland. Now that these backgrounds are dry, these are going to be my emojis. Because this one's on quite a 
pale rock. I'm going to paint an outline on it. But for the others, I think I'll just leave it because sometimes painting the outlines are a little bit fiddly, so it can be easier not to bother. And remember, you'll need that thin brush for doing something like that. So what am I going to do for this one? I reckon it's that way up. Gloves it off. A little bit wobbly, but it's fine. Decide if you want to paint any, you know, like eyes on them that will be white, because if so, you'll need to leave that time to dry before you put the black on afterwards. <laughs> Gone for a little surprised face there. Hopefully that'll make somebody smile. <laughs> so I said for some of these I was going to put writing on them and there's a couple of different ways you can do that. You can use a very thin brush and that's normally better if you're just going to write one word. So this might need a grown up. Depends how steady a hand you've got. And if you are going to paint a word, you'll probably find it easier in all capitals. It can be a bit of a trick making sure that you don't run out of room. I might just put a little decoration under there. Actually, no, I won't do one on the top. Okay. Um, if, it, if you don't have a thin brush or it's a little bit more difficult, you could try using a permanent marker. This might be easier for the younger ones in your group. So you can write messages on the pebbles. The other thing you could play around with if you have access to them is paint pens. Now, there's a couple of different types, so even though these are the same brand, the thinner one has a plastic nib, which is going to be really difficult to use on the pebbles, whereas this one has a fabric nib, so it's going to be easier. And I'm going to use that on here, because this is going to be a longer one. I thought it would be really nice, because I've painted both sides, I'm going to paint a joke on one side and the answer on the other. Nearly ran out of room there. So have a think if you are going to do anything two-sided, because then people can interact with that pebble when they come across it. I'm going to leave this stood up like that to dry. So give everything plenty of time to dry, and then you'll be able to go out for the walk together to put them outside. Just a little note on cleaning your equipment when you're working with acrylic. So the paints that are still very fresh, like this one, will wash off with water no problem. But here, this was actually left over from yesterday and it's dried completely solid. And so you might find it easier to peel that away. If you just run it under the tap, it'll stay still and you might panic that it'll not come off. If you scrub it or scratch it off, it'll be fine. So once the pebbles are dry, you can go out on a walk together and decide where to put them. And things you might like to think about are where will they stand out? Where are lots of people going to be to have the chance to see them? Do you want them to be hidden or obvious? Do you want them in places where people just look at them or maybe where they'll take them and interact with them? So I'm going on a walk in my local area. I've got a big park near me and there's a, a primary school. So I'm going to place a lot of the pebbles near there so that there's a good chance that people will see them as they're going to school and visiting the park. Enjoy discussing together where good places might be and, you know, putting the pebbles where you like. The very last thing that you might like to do is talk together about how it went. 
Did you enjoy the activity? Which bits did you do working together? And which bits did you do on your own independently? How did you share ideas? And were you good at maybe even negotiating if people had different ideas to share? Did it have an impact on the community? Did it make people smile? If you've put your pebbles somewhere that you can keep an eye on, you might like to notice if other people see them and if they say anything as well. So enjoy the different conversations that come up. Quite often, it's not the activity itself that lets us work in partnership, but the way we approach it. So treat the whole thing as an opportunity to talk together and enjoy each other's ideas. I hope you enjoy that. And if you have done some examples of painting pebbles together, we would love to see them. Please put them on social media and hashtag WeActTogether. Thank you very much. Bye.